Hello, I'm Dr. Gilman, and today's video is dealing with frequency tables in Excel. Um, and so today we're going to look at data and analyze it with two types of frequency tables. I'm going to do a regular frequency table and then a relative frequency table. So below are 25 days of data showing the number of crimes stopped by Team Arrow in Star City. Um, if you're new to my channel, I am a huge Arrowverse fan and uh, super excited about all of the uh, shows on CW. So these are typically my examples. So what we have here is like in day one, like maybe September 1st, they stopped three crimes. September 2nd, they stopped two crimes, right? So this all goes all the way to day 25 over here. And so what we're gonna do first is copy the data into Excel. Um, if you're using a homework system, this is probably a pretty easy process. There may even be a button for it. Um, it is done with the copy and paste features, and if you don't actually know how to copy data into Excel, please see one of my earlier uh, videos, okay, where I cover that. But uh, I do already have the number of crimes stopped and the data in a table over here. You can see it goes all the way to day 25, right? So second, what we're gonna do is use the data sort and filter advanced to find all the unique values. This is where Excel really helps you over a standard calculator and why you should learn how to use Excel. Um, it's gonna be able to do some pretty cool things, right? So I click on the data tab over here and under sort and filter, there's this advanced button. And when you click on it, you get this little pop-up that kind of walks you through what you wanna do. Do you wanna filter the list in place? If we do that, we'll destroy the repeated values, the frequencies, and so we don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is we wanna copy it to another location. And so the list range is here, and you can see it includes the title, which I actually wanna keep and goes all the way down to the 26. Like it kind of found the data on its own, which is cool for Excel, right? Um, and then what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and copy it to a cell nearby, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in D1 right over here. Uh, and then you wanna click on the unique records only, otherwise it just basically copies and pastes the whole list. Once you do that and you click on okay, you can see that three, four, one, zero, and then three is a repeat, so it doesn't repeat it. Then two shows up, and then three and two and three and four and one are all repeats until you get down to five. So what it's done here is it has gone ahead and put those unique values in. Now this isn't really helpful, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the sort and filter again, and I'm gonna sort it from least to greatest. And so there we go, all right? So now what we're gonna do, uh, third, is we're gonna use the count if function to help us find the actual frequencies, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this right here. I'm gonna scooch this over just a little bit. And right next to it, I'm gonna put frequencies. All right, so now what do I need to do? Equals, because it's a function, count if, right? And then I'm gonna hit the tab button so that it uh, goes ahead and fills in the function. Um, you're more than welcome to go ahead and put like count, and then if you scroll down to it and you hit the tab button, it also works. Or if you would like, you can do count if, and then once it shows up, you can double click on it, right? Now, the range is the range of values. That's these guys over here, so I'm gonna count these over here. Now here's the secret sauce, all right? The secret sauce is to use the F4 key to lock the range of values or it's gonna move during the paste procedure and that is not gonna be good. So now what I do is when I've got this, I'm gonna hit F4 and you see all the little dollar signs, that locks everything in place and this is what you wanna do. Then I'm gonna once I've got the range in, you can see there's a comma there, and now I need the criteria. The criteria is I want to count it if it's a zero. So I actually click in the zero. This is the whole purpose of finding the unique value, so I could have this nice table already set up for me. And then I'm going to close the parentheses, and I'm going to hit enter, and there's only one. 
And so here it is right there. And if I scroll through, there are no other days. So this was like a weekend or somebody's birthday. We took it off. We didn't stop any crimes. And then we got back to work, right? Now, here's the cool part, right? Um, <clears throat> we're going to paste this down, right? I'm going to go ahead and grab this and drag it down. And this is going to give me the frequencies for the table of values. So only once did we stop zero crimes, three times we stopped one crime, seven times we stopped two crimes, and this kind of thing. So now what we want to do is last, if you need the relative frequencies, you're going to divide by the sum function. Now there's actually two ways of doing this. One way would be to just go equals sum and add up all the values, right? And you've got 25 of them. So now for the relative frequencies, you can go equals that frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies is going to give you your relative frequency. And again, we don't want this 25 to move. We want to lock it in place. We always want that 25 to be there. So I hit F4 again. Again, that's the secret sauce. You hit enter, and now you can go ahead and drag that all the way down. You'll know that you have the correct relative frequencies when, when you sum them up, it sums to one, all right? And so now you have the number of crimes stopped, unique values, the frequency of those values, and the relative frequency of each of those data values, all right? Um, well, that wasn't too bad, and so that really makes us happy. Um, be sure to like and subscribe so you can be notified of new content when it comes out.